Hi everybody let's continue our discussion of ideal fermi gas you know we considered non degenerate or classical case where this n lambda q by g n lambda q by g for far less than 1 we know what is n small n is the particle density number of particles by volume and for uh, non degenerate or classical case this is much much less than 1 density very low and or the temperature very high and we get, we got the classical result pv equal to nkt for the state of the gas and uh, energy was obtained as 3 by 10 kt cv specific heat at constant volume obtained as 3 by 2 nk and all these results for the helmholtz free energy entropy this is for this is applicable or the results of a classical ideal gas now let's uh, uh, then we considered uh, for uh, parameter set small in comparison with the unity but not very small okay the next thing is the degenerate case okay after the non degenerate case we now see degenerate case where this n lambda q by g far far greater than 1 okay in this case the functions our fermi dirac functions whether it is f5 by 2 set or f3 by 2 set that can be expressed as a symptotic expansion in powers of log z to the power minus 1 that we will see and uh, uh we speak of the gas as being degenerate the gas is now degenerate okay when n lambda q by g far far greater than 1 we say the gas is degenerate when it is far far less than 1 less than 1 we say the gas is non degenerate okay and when the n lambda q by g far far greater than 1 and it tends to infinity our uh, functions assume a closed to form and we speak of the gas as completely degenerate so as n lambda q by g tends to infinity we say the gas is completely no a completely degenerate okay so we first consider completely degenerate case this happens when the uh, limit temperature tends to zero okay temperature tends to zero that means n lambda q by g tends to infinity lambda has the temperature in the denominator so as temperature tends to zero this n lambda q by g tends to infinity then what happens to the mean occupation number you know the mean occupation number if z is written as mu by kt the fugacity is written as mu by kt the mean occupation number now becomes 1 power e to the power epsilon minus mu uh, by kt plus 1 okay now if temperature is zero this term is infinite okay this term is infinite and we have to see whether it is possible plus infinite or minus infinite okay for epsilon if epsilon is less than this mu zero then you, you may ask what is mu zero mu zero is the chemical potential of the system at temperature zero but when temperature is zero kelvin the chemical potential is mu zero so if epsilon is less than mu zero then we will have e to the power minus infinity that means this is zero this term is zero exponential term is zero and you have the mean value of the occupation number as equal to 
okay and when epsilon is greater than mu epsilon is greater than mu this term will be e to the power infinity so this will be infinity and mean value of the occupation number will be equal to zero okay so for epsilon less than mu, mu or mu zero it will be equal to one for epsilon greater than mu zero it will be equal to zero so if we plot n epsilon against mu, uh, epsilon mean occupation number against epsilon uh, this will be a step function we say this is a step function that means until mu zero until the chemical potential energy equal to the chemical potential n epsilon is equal to one and uh, above mu zero it is equal to zero so this is a step function what this means is all single particle states from ground state to mu zero is filled completely filled by uh, the power exclusion principle each state has one particle okay that is why mean occupation number is one but above mu zero it is equal to zero okay so all single particle states from the ground state up to epsilon energy is mu zero is filled and so and uh, the, the mean occupation number is one above it it is zero okay so at temperature zero all single particle states up to epsilon equal to mu zero are completely filled with one particle per state in accordance with the Pauli principle and all single particle states with epsilon greater than mu zero are empty okay all single particle states with epsilon greater than mu zero are empty that is why we get n epsilon mean occupation number equal to zero here okay the limiting value mu zero okay this value mu zero th this is referred to as the fermi energy of the system and it is denoted by epsilon of so mu zero up to which the particles are uh, the states are filled it is called the fermi energy and it is represented by epsilon f so it is also the topmost field energy of the topmost field level at a temperature equal to zero kelvin so fermi energy is the energy of the topmost field uh, energy level at a temperature equal to zero is represented by epsilon f the corresponding value of the single particle momentum is referred to as Fermi momentum okay and it is denoted by PF so Fermi energy epsilon of the corresponding momentum PF how they are related epsilon of is equal to PF square by 2F okay then the Fermi energy is equal to P momentum square by 2m so here we have the fermi momentum okay now we in terms of momentum we are writing the relation uh, a of p dp a of p dp is the number of states in the momentum range p to p plus dp number of states in the momentum range p to p plus dp that is a of p dp so uh, when you integrate it from zero to p of zero the lowest ground state p of the energy of the topmost field level when temperature is zero kelvin so when you integrate over this momentum range you get the total number of particles in the system okay so zero to p of a or p dp a of p dp is the number of states in the momentum range p to p plus dp that is equal to the total number of particles in the system that is clear now we know we convert this moment this uh, this into the total number of states 
and do uh, the uh, this into into uh, convert this into v for pi this a of p d p that is a of p d p is actually v for pi p square d p over h cube and g is the uh, factor the weight factor okay g is the weight factor so uh, uh, we know this conversion the number of states in the momentum range p to p plus dp that will be equal to v for pi p square by v for pi p square dp over h cube and g is the weight factor arises arising out of spin or some other internal uh, due to some internal structure of the particle so that is equal to n and we integrate this over p so we get g v for pi h q p of q by 3 is equal to n p of equal to this okay momentum will be equal to this and once we have got momentum we can find the energy epsilon of is p of square by 2m okay square of momentum by 2m and this is so we get the fermi energy so we see the fermi energy depends on the number of particles in the system volume of the system okay the mass its mass so this is the fermi energy of a system of fermions if we calculate the ground state or zero point energy of the system okay the ground state or zero point energy of the system the total energy of the system is computed using this equation sigma epsilon mean occupation number into epsilon we sum over all the states this is the number of particles in each state of energy epsilon and you multiply it with the epsilon you get the total energy of the system and when t is equal to 0 kelvin we know the mean occupation number is 1 for epsilon less than epsilon f and it is equal to 0 for epsilon greater than epsilon f okay so once again we do this uh, using this result we once again convert this into uh, this form so integral 0 to p of Okay, the momentum changing from 0 to pf g v for pi p square dp over h cube okay and do p, this epsilon is written as p square by 2f so we get this and we get this integral we integrate apply the limits so we have this pf to the power 5 by 5 okay so e0 by n if we calculate e0 by n that is we got e0 as this now we divide it by n n is the total number of particles in the system that we have got as this the total number of particles in the system is g into v4 pi by h cube p of q by 3 so that we give here okay e0 by n so p of is there in both in the numerator and denominator so this is 3 by 5 pf square by 2m and this is pf square by 2m is the uh, epsilon of the fermi energy so 3 by 5 epsilon of so e0 by n the ground state energy of the system by the total number of particles in the system is 3 by 5 epsilon of okay so this is a very important result e0 this is e0 by n e0 the ground state energy is 3 by 5 n total number of particles epsilon f so the ground state energy of an ideal fermi gas is not zero it will have definite value that is 3 by 5 n capital n epsilon f the fermi energy now let's calculate the ground state pressure that's very easy to calculate ground state pressure is 2 by third of the energy density we know pressure is 2 by third of energy density so we uh, take 2 by 3 e0 by v e0 is 3 by 5 n epsilon of 3 by 5 n epsilon of 
by volume so this is p0 is equal to 2 by 5 this 3 get cancelled 2 by 5 small n is the particle density okay particle density into epsilon f so p0 is 2 by 5 small n epsilon f and epsilon f can be written using this equation okay here also we have particle density n by v so in terms of that I can write this as 3 4 pi g small n the particle density uh, to the power 2 by 3 okay so here I have small n particle density here also particle density to the power 2 by 3 so the ground state pressure will be proportional to small n to the power 5 by 3 okay so we have the ground state energy when temperature is zero Kelvin ground state energy and correspondingly ground state pressure okay so this zero point motion okay zero point mo motion means at zero point temperature zero Kelvin there is motion there is energy for, for the system there is pressure in the system and this is clearly a quantum effect arising because of the Pauli principle okay so due to this even at t equal to 0 Kelvin the particles constituting system cannot sit till down into a single energy state as in the Bose case in the Bose case we know as we brought the temperature down the more and more number of particles began to sit till into a single particle state of energy epsilon equal to zero but here this is not possible because of the Pauli principle obeyed by Fermi systems only one particle can occupy the ground state of energy epsilon equal to zero all other particles are spread over uh, the different available energy state lower energy state as a result the Fermi system even at absolute zero is quite live so we say even at absolute zero the Fermi system is quite live it's quite live it has got ground state energy and ground state pressure 